Welcome! I'm glad you made it! This is the Death Knell 2.0, a base for a medium-sized group designed to excel in two areas to a degree far above its price point, offline and online defense. For that purpose it has the following features. More walls to core means longer raid times requiring more rockets and giving a lot of time for counters to arrive, as well as offering you better chances at sealing the base mid-raid. The highly armored core however is a kind of a red herring, a decoy. You don't mind it taking a beating because the base also includes six conditional roof bunkers for spreading the loot around. Three of the bunkers are under the peak downs, armored, and three of them are high on the shooting floor to create separation, making the Pamulin to core approach unproductive. The online defenses are designed with the principle of multiple redundancy, and also with the aim to be overwhelming. Multi-TC gaps combined with ramp peaks provide perfect vision around the shell, while the extended shooting floors give incredible vision outwards and around the base. On top of that, you have three Sentinel-type flank bases connected to the main base by walkways, each with its own complete 360 shooting floor. Each one of these towers holds up to six beds, and combined with the core base's bedrooms you have a total of 36 beds dispersed around the base, meaning you are not running out of spawn points easily. And you'd expect all this to be expensive, but it's very cheap for a base of this strength. The main TC even holds upkeep for about 24 hours. In fact, the main base was so cheap that we can afford three expensive flank bases and still have low upkeep, which I believe is testament to its efficiency. And if indeed your group finds it cheap, or if you're playing on a modded server, there is still much that can be upgraded, and as it already has 5 volts to core, this design can definitely scale up. And now we build. But before we start the build tutorial itself, be warned that this is a pro build and advanced... Uh... This is an expert build. This is an expert build. Practice it on a build server before trying it in-game. We shall start with a compartment for the TC, placing it closer to the right wall. Then comes a circle of metal foundations, adding an extra foundation pointing out of the circle, which will be the jump up to the second floor. Next, close the core with HQM walls, add a double shelf next to the TC, and fill the space with garage doors. After closing the ceiling with HQM triangles, add a basic chute entrance with an HQM ceiling as well. Now you could upgrade the 4 shoot walls, and while it will not add to the raid to TC cost, it may potentially improve the protection of the core loot, so that's up to you. Next come two layers of honeycomb to the core. And make sure to watch my triangle splash bug video to know why triangle tiles should only be placed like this. Now let's do the second floor. With it done, we'll have a usable base we can move into. A jump up goes exactly opposite the shoot to the core. Then comes a ring of stone frames around the core hexagon, followed by sheet metal frames in the center, all of which will hold garage doors. The core hexagon will be roofed with HQM, the rest with sheet metal, and a chute entrance will be added on top. Now back inside the second floor, we will add six double triangle loot rooms like so. The open core floor here is good for mobility early in the wipe. There is only one jump up, which is because mobility stops being important here soon, as the first two floors are to be completely locked down during a raid anyway. The loot rooms themselves double as a kind of honeycomb to the core as well. The window frame shelf combination is difficult to thread rockets through in a hectic online raid situation. So that's the second floor done. 
Now on to the third, which is our first bedroom floor. To the right of the chute we'll have a battery or a locker compartment and follow with our first bedroom. First, build a jump up here on the left. Then enclose the space before setting up the beds and locker exactly as shown. Note that it's very important for the bed not to clip through the garage door when closed. To the right of the bedroom we have two triangles we can use as a loot room. Then another bedroom, with a jump up of course. This we follow with a second loot room. And finally a third bedroom of identical design. Also, if you want, you can convert these loot rooms to utility rooms. And finally, to minimize rocket splash effects, we will add some separators here, in the form of a wall and two garage doors. So, after closing in the ceilings, we have three roof exits and we're going to build three more bedrooms on top of them. Yes, these two walls are soft side out, trust me on this one. The bedroom design is similar to the ones below, except having turrets on this level is much more important. So that's three bedrooms done on level 4 of the base, and that's as far as we'll take the core for now. Time to expand with some external TCs. On the three sides of the base where we have these two soft side walls, we will add two metal triangles. A twig triangle goes in the middle, from which we will build nine squares out, destroying all twig foundations but for that last square. From it, we build triangles towards the base like so, until we can place these three square foundations. To these we will add three more, until we get this footprint. To maintain these we will build external DCs. From the central square, build out one stone square, a metal one with a triangle to the right, one more of metal and one more of stone, and finally a metal square surrounded by triangles. Here we'll build a TC compartment. To the right of it, a jump up to the second floor. Then a metal wall on the side facing the main base, and the final triangle will be closed with two garage doors. We'll also add a roof entrance on the second floor. And to finish this, for now, build five metal frames towards the base like so. That leaves three sides of the core. Here we shall first prepare the lower bunkers. On the left, build a basic triangle honeycomb. On the right, build an armored loot room like so. Make sure to rotate this frame so as to get these extended conditional side shapes. The inside shelf will be added from the outside so as to avoid the dreaded triangle splash bug. And for much the same reason, we will use a twig frame here to add this final triangle, like so. It will not be possible to do this later, which is why we do it now. From this point we follow the same steps as before, building out 9 square foundations, returning with triangles and establishing 6 foundations on all sides of the base. 
except in this case the first square will be armored. Oh, and you can close the bunkers now if you want. Also this time the external TCs will be a bit more plain. Go out one twig square, a metal square with a triangle to the right, a stone square and another twig one. Then set up a basic 7 rocket TC compartment like so. And after building 5 metal frames towards the base, you don't really need these twig foundations anymore. Incidentally, if you utilize the wooden chute here, don't worry, just build the bunker side for now. Just don't close the bunker yet. And with the external footprint in place, we can start work on the shell. On the sides of the base with a bunker, we will first set a metal frame with a garage door on the middle square, and then build up three levels of walls. On top of this, stone floors go on the sides and a horizontal metal frame in the middle. The next floor will be a window floor, with the exception of a double door. Now to build our peak downs, add a ramp here, then build a twig scaffolding like so, and join the second ramp to the first. Of course, one garage door isn't quite secure as a main entrance, so we'll add this combination of shop front, single door and window. And on the three sides of the base with these weird soft side walls, the shell is almost the same, but with a couple of important exceptions. First, no garage door here. Three entrances will suffice. On top, we will use a garage door instead of a double door. Also, we only add two ceiling tiles, leaving a space in the middle. This will all make sense in a couple of minutes, trust me. The shell is almost done, but first, since I don't like these foundations being splashable, I do this. And if raised foundations aren't an option, you can try this. Or even this. In any case, with the shell mostly done, we will proceed to finish the core and close everything nice and tight. In this step, we will honeycomb the core, complete our six bunkers and close the ceiling, adding three roof exits. Starting with the bunker sides, build one level of metal honeycomb, followed by a level of stone honeycomb. A ladder hatch here will be our new base entrance. From it you can place a triangle roof on top of the bunker, like so. Make sure to attach it to the HQM triangle, not the actual bunker wall. Getting back up, a window will go on the left, followed by a jump up to the roof. Then a single door leading to the shooting floor and another window. To finish, we'll add two garage doors behind us, here. And if you had a wooden chute here, no problem. Remove the door frame, upgrade and close the rest just as in the previous step. You live long, you prosper. As for the non-bunker sides, well the reason we have these walls soft side out is that we're going to build three more bunkers up there. To do that we will start with two levels of metal honeycomb, with a level of stone honeycomb on top.
then we add three levels of stone wall here. On top we'll build a spacious metal bunker which can hold two shelves or just one shelf and have room for batteries, whichever you like. The point is that these top side bunkers are more likely to be missed completely in a standard pommel raid. Now on top, attach a square tile not to the outside socket, but the inner one. This will seal the bunker, at which point we may as well close the roof in completely. We do want roof exits though, and we'll build them like this. This will give the turrets good firing arcs. You can also close the half gap with twig to delight people who love surprises. And as we still have these gaps here, we will now close them while also getting some beautiful roof peaks. One slanted roof attaches to the outside shell part, then a triangle roof attached to the inside part, the core base, and once again a roof attached to the external shell. These are beautiful for long range. We still need to take care of our online defense situation, but first we'll improve stability for our peaks and bunkers, finishing work on the core completely. First, to finalize the inner peaks, attach triangle tiles like so. Then, inside where we have armored bunkers, build up three levels of metal frames to the right of the bunker. And in the corner here, four levels of stone frames. If you see that they do not seal the gap, rotate them. So that also takes care of our multi-TC gap situation. On the three sides of the base where the bunkers are up top, add four levels of metal frames here. These will lend support to the shooting floor as well as to the bunker seal. Then, as before, hide shell gaps with four levels of stone frames, making sure they're properly rotated. As a side note, if you want to add more stability, that's never a bad idea. But be careful not to attach anything to the other side of the bunker walls, or they shall open never more. And now it's time to take care of our online defense situation. On the sides where we have entrances, we will first establish some stability by adding these frames. On top, add a floor, a frame and another floor, closing it all in with window frames. A roof ramp goes here, and again we need some temporary scaffolding to build the second roof ramp, the one which will serve us as a peak down. So that was the easy part. On the three remaining sides, well here we'll build a variation of my sentinel flank base. On the second floor of our external TC compartment, we'll close the space in like so and add a ladder hatch for getting up. Behind the ladder hatch, a garage door. On the right, a locker compartment. And two beds will allow us to more easily defend a raid. On the third floor, pretty much the same. A ladder hatch will go on top of our existing ladder hatch, with a garage door behind it. And this time we have room for a battery, in addition to a locker and two beds. Going up to the fourth floor, build triangles on each side of the square like so. Facing the main base, two door frames with cell doors for better vision. 
while the rest will be closed in with embrasured window frames. These door frames and the doors that open always to the right will allow us to walk on these gaps without fear of falling and give us great peaks. Oh, and let's not forget to honeycomb the TC compartment. And that's the tower done. This is already pretty powerful, but catwalks will make it that much better, allowing us as defenders to spawn and appear nearly anywhere around and in the base. Now I prefer having a ladder hatch here instead of another peak down, because frankly we have peak downs enough. And I just really like being able to get down into the compound from the shooting floor easily without having to go through corridors and doors. And now that we have some room to maneuver here, we can also make easier use of these topside bunkers. And since we already have a battery in there, I'd suggest adding some electrics. You can use the turbine to power turrets that will cover the approach to the main base, as well as turrets in the catwalks or the main base itself. And let none say I didn't save the best for last. All done. The Death Knell 2.0. She upgrades well, she compounds easily. You treat her right and she'll do right by you, or by Jove, my name isn't g Light the Golden Hand. Now if you liked this design and this video, I would appreciate it greatly if you click the like button and help my channel grow. And so, until next time, be healthy, be happy and goodbye.